right monitor is an important creative tool and a vital part of your video editing system. In this video, we'll go over the most important features to look for in a monitor for video editing. We'll cover resolution, color space, color depth, and calibration. By the end of this video, you'll understand what monitor specs relate to video production. Chris here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in this video. Do you want to edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or the link in the description. We'll start off with the easy one, resolution. This tells us how many pixels are in an image. For instance, each frame of a full HD video is 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels tall. This is also the standard resolution for most modern monitors. That means when you watch your full HD 1920 by 1080 video in full screen on most monitors, you're watching it in its native resolution. Because the video and the monitor share the same number of pixels, this will be the clearest, most accurate experience of your video clip. However, if you watch a 4K clip on an HD monitor, you aren't getting the full 4K experience. A frame in 4K video is 3840 pixels wide and 2160 pixels tall. That's way more pixels than a standard HD display provides. The 4K footage does hold more detail, so it will likely still look better than your average HD clip, but you are still technically watching the video in HD. That means you are missing out on some of the detail that 4K offers. If you are frequently working with 4K resolutions and above, you may want to invest in a 4K monitor to take full advantage of those extra pixels. Next up, color gamut. This defines the range of colors that the monitor is able to reproduce. To put the spec into context, we use reference color spaces. These are different reference color spaces for different use cases. Let's take a look at a few of the most common. sRGB is the default standard for most of the media we encounter online. It shares an identical gamut with Rec. 709, which is the standard for HD video. DCI-P3 is used for motion picture distribution and includes some true-to-life colors that sRGB is missing. As you look at monitors, you may also encounter Adobe RGB. This color space is designed for print reproduction and includes ranges of colors that can be replicated by photo printers. Rec 2020 or BT 2020 is another standard designed for wide gamut UHD video that covers even more colors on the visible spectrum. This is a relatively new standard and the extended color values are difficult even for the best monitors to replicate. As you shop for monitors, you'll see the color capabilities notated as percentages of one of these reference color spaces. For instance, the monitor featured on the Dell 7770 can reproduce 99% of the DCI P3 color space. That makes it a good choice for filmmakers since the colors you see on your screen will match the colors displayed in the theater. Before making a selection, think about how you'll use your monitor. Consider both the color space needed to properly view the media you'll be editing, as well as the color space you'll use for final export and delivery. In some cases, you may not need the wider color spaces that Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 offer. For instance, you may only want to produce videos for YouTube and other social media platforms. In that case, you could choose a monitor that accurately reproduces the sRGB color space. However, if you can afford a monitor with a wider color gamut, you'll be prepared to work on a broader range of projects, including cinematic work. If you would like the option to view your work in different color spaces, be sure to choose a monitor that offers emulation modes. Color space defines the range of colors a monitor can reproduce, but color depth defines the number of different shades that can be reproduced within that range. Color depth defines the number of different shades that can be reproduced within that range. This is important when you are working with fine gradations of color. A higher bit depth monitor will be able to display more distinct colors. This results in a smoother gradient since more of the in-between colors will be included. Color information, like other information, is stored in bits. A bit is the smallest unit of data and represents either an on slate or an off slate. That's either a one or zero in binary. For instance, on a grayscale monitor with a one bit color depth, each individual pixel could be either white or black. However, each pixel on a one bit color monitor could display up to eight different colors. That's because each pixel contains three color channels, red, green, and blue. 
each of those channels will be either on or off, giving us two options for each of the three channels. Thus, we can multiply two times two times two to get eight potential colors. Luckily, our modern monitors are able to display a lot more than eight colors. That's because they can use more than one bit of information for each color channel. Today, 8-bit color depth is standard on most monitors. These monitors can reproduce more than 16.7 million distinct colors. Some monitors even offer 10 and 12-bit color depths, with 10-bit offering 1.07 billion colors and 12-bit offering 68.72 billion. That's a huge range of colors that can be reproduced, but keep in mind that 8-bit color is still the standard in most media applications. Your video are likely shot in 8-bit video and viewed on 8-bit monitors or TV. However, if your camera is capable of capturing higher bit depths, you are definitely benefiting from using a monitor that can match it. However, if your camera is capable of capturing at higher bit depths, you will definitely benefit from using a monitor that can match it. Even if you export the final video using 8-bit color, having the ability to view and manipulate the color value values as they were captured in camera will lead to a better finished product overall. While color space and color depth define the range and distinct shades of color that can be reproduced, the calibration of the monitor will determine the accuracy of those colors. In other words, calibration ensures that those colors that the monitor displays are the colors we expect. Calibration ensures that the colors the monitor displays are the colors we expect. Most monitors will come pre-calibrated from the factory. They may even include a calibration card with calibration information for your specific display. However, you can also use on-screen test patterns, software tools, or a device called a colorimeter to calibrate and recalibrate your monitor as needed. A well-calibrated monitor will have good screen accuracy. This is notated with the standardized measurement Delta E. This tells us the difference between the color that is displayed and the color that should be displayed. The smaller the delta E value, the better. Values less or equal to one will show differences that are not perceivable with the human eye. Differences shown at values between one and two will be noticeable to professionals who look closely. Values above two will show differences that are noticeable to most people. For video work and especially color correction and grading, you need a monitor that can show you accurate and consistent colors. Look for a monitor rated delta E2 or smaller to ensure colors appear as expected. Now that you know what to look for in a video editing monitor, let's take a look at a couple of real world examples. Remember, we need a monitor that matches the native resolution of our footage, has good color space coverage and color depth, and can display those colors accurately. We'll start with the Dell 7770. This mobile workstation can be equipped with a 4K or HD display that covers 100% of sRGB color space, as well as 99% of the DCI-P3 color space. The monitor also features Dell Premier Color, allowing you to switch between color spaces depending on the type of content being viewed. Premier Color will calibrate this wide gamut monitor so your media display as intended. Now let's take a look at a standalone monitor that you could pair with any video editing system, the Dell UltraSharp 27-inch 4K Premier Color Monitor. As the name suggests, this 4K monitor also supports Dell Premier Color for better color accuracy in different color spaces. Plus, this monitor includes a built-in colorimeter and supports automated color calibration. With a 10-bit color depth, the monitor can reproduce 1.07 billion colors and covers 100% of the Adobe RGB color gamut, 98% DCI-P3, and an impressive 80% BT2020. All of this makes the UltraSharp 27 4K Premier monitor ideal for video editing, color correction, and color grading. By now, you should understand what monitor specs are the most important when it comes to video post-production. The right monitor is a vital part of any video editing system and will help you better achieve your creative goals. So choose wisely. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the next video, we'll cover how to optimize your computer for video editing.